I had to unplug the smoke detector for this one. Hello there. You're watching a Cord Steppers Anonymous production. Presented to you by John Richard Klein, the Cassette Master. And in this particular video, we will be showing to you a very special vintage reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, a portable reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder, the Sony TC905. It is a very interesting tape recorder. Now, some of you out there may have seen a video on the Sony TC905A. Well, this is a very similar, albeit very different, tape recorder. Enjoy. Here, displayed, is the specimen as a complete unit. This recorder is a two-piece unit. It has a base, or what I like to call a docking station in the modern terminology way, and the tape recorder itself. Now this particular tape recorder is uh, designed that you can put four D cells into the bottom compartment to power the recorder when it's on the docking station and the bottom compartment contains a power amplifier to drive its built-in speaker. But when detached the recorder will run on its own set of four AA cells. But unfortunately, you will not be able to hear anything unless you plug in an external amplifier into the monitor jack. Here, the hinged cover door has been opened. This recorder uses two capstan sleeves, one for each speed. When you remove the head cover, you'll notice here is a nice big fat capstan for 3 and 3 fourths inches per second, also known as 9.5 centimeters per second. When replacing it with this smaller diameter capstan sleeve, the recorder will run at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second, also known as 4.8 centimeters per second. Now, although theoretically you could run this recorder at 15 16 inches per second without any capstan sleeve, the pin triller does not quite have enough pressure to go all the way to the thinner diameter capstan when there is no sleeve. Another interesting thing I'd like to show on this recorder is the way of its erasing. The erase is taken care of by a permanent magnet erase. When I push the record button, not only does the record play switch engage, but it also swings the little erase head over so that the permanent magnet will make contact with the one fourth inch magnetic tape. When you release the record button, it swings back into its standby position. This head, of course, is for your recording and playback needs. This is what the unit looks like without reels loaded on it. Notice the interesting textured styling here, like this. Now, let's watch the reel tables move. When we go into play mode, every look, everything looks fine. Your take-up reel is moving, and your supply reel is not. Now let's go into rewind. This might uh, take you for a spin. The rewind reel, now the supply reel is spinning nicely. But the supply, or the take up reel, is also spinning in the reverse direction, albeit a little slower. Its friction clutch makes it where it does not force the reel along, but you can stop it easily. That is due to an all-gear based design in the drive mechanisms of this tape recorder. Whereas most tape recorders use either drive belts or rubber idler wheels, this recorder and its brother, the TC905A, both incorporate an all-gear based drive system, where the gears themselves, aside from rotating, 
maintain their positions and do not shift like idlers do. Because of that, they have to rely on clutches for whenever they change the direction for rewind or play. Now, let's go ahead and make a recording. This recorder uses automatic... Good night, what am I saying? This recorder uses manual level control. Also seen is the original Sony F97 dynamic microphone in an all metal enclosure. It has a very nice weight to it. I had to replace the jack for it because the original jack's outer casing was completely missing. And it was having an intermittent short. And when I say short, I mean an actual short, I believe, not open circuit. As many people, though, incorrectly say short when they refer to an open circuit, which is one of my pet peeves, and I'm sure many people's pet peeves. Well, okay, now, here's just a little bit better view of the front panel of this recorder. Now, you'll see the controls here. This is an instant stop button, which simply uh, disengages power from the motor. So when you push it, the motor turns off. When you let go, the motor is allowed to power back on. That only applies to play and record. Then the record button, which is an interlocked button such that you have to hold it down when going into forward to go into record mode. Now you may have heard a loud peep when I did that. That's because of the Larson effect taking place. Because if you want to record while you have the docking station, or the SSA-905, hooked up, you have to turn the speaker switch off. Otherwise, you will hear the, the microphone's signal coming through the speaker like a public address system. Over here we have the volume control. And over here, using our little VU meter, we can establish a recording level. Let's go ahead and put it into record. I'm holding down the instant stop so that I'm not wasting tape while I'm trying to set my level. Then I can speak into the microphone and set my level. You can see that the level is set too high as we're going into the red zone. We try winding it back a bit. And winding it back a little bit more so the modulation of my voice is maintained within the black level. But covering just about all the black level and only occasionally going into the red. Releasing the instant stop, we begin making a recording on the Sony TC905 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from 1965. I think before we play back the recording I'm going to hook the recorder directly to the camera. First, let's show how we remove the recorder from the docking station. Now you don't have to remove the recorder in order to use an external amplifier but I'd like to show you know what it looks like without the docking station and also I can show you that it uses the four D size cells and my, my, feel it okay at some point I will make another video where I compare and contrast this recorder with the TC905A because the differences between the two is are quite staggering in a sense but this particular video is strictly for the 905 so the comparing and contrasting will be saved for a different dedicated video here's the docking station it contains a little jack that looks like your old-fashioned uh, mic remote jack that you see on microphones for old cassette recorders. And here's the recorder itself with the docking station removed. Quite portable, very nice in its portability. Now unfortunately of course cosmetically this isn't in the best shape. It's got some scratches and stuff on it. But it's still a very interesting recorder nonetheless. And another thing I really like about this this recorder is the fact that aside from this top part that covers up the reels here 
the rest of the actual recorder's case is solid metal. Even the bottom plate here is metal. And I just love that. This thing is so sturdy. I just I love it when recorders are made out of metal and yeah. And hey, another nice thing I want to show you is this little remote jack on the side. I know when I unplug it, the motor turns off. So I know this remote jack is going to be for a remote start-stop for the motor. I also saw a couple of audio-looking shielded cable wires going to it. So it's either pr it's probably going to have an audio output on there or maybe an audio input. I'm not sure which. I guess I could just probe it with the, with the signal injector and find out. But of course, right now, this recorder, you're not going to hear a peep when I put into playback because there is no built-in speaker. Facing the instant stop, we begin making a recording on the Sony TC905 reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder from 1965. This is a very interesting reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. I want to give you a little bit more description to this machine. That is, this recorder is what should not be a surprise, AC bias, not DC bias, which is very good. A Sony reel-to-reel -reel of this era, you would expect an AC bias machine. Actually, I don't know if Sony ever made a DC bias reel-to-reel. -reel. Sony only started making DC bias products with their cassette recorders later on when, you know, a lot of recorders' qualities were generally going way downhill probably in the 1980s. But, this recorder is AC bias and as you saw earlier, permanent magnet erase. And, this recorder, the recorder itself, excluding the SSA-905 docking station, just the TC-905 or tape recorder-905, which I believe is what TC stands for in Sony's model numbers, only uses four transistors. The amplifier uses three transistors. And the bias oscillator uses one. Then the SSA905 uses an additional three transistors, that is one driving transistor and then a push-pull pair to drive the internal oval speaker. When I tried hooking up an earphone to the monitor output, I really didn't get hardly anything at all. But when I hook up an actual amplifier to the monitor output, I get a good signal. So it seems to me that this machine must be used with an external amplifier for monitoring. Also, I had to recap the entire thing. When I first got this recorder, it was as Clyde site refers to as DOA or dead on arrival. It literally would not even power up. The view meter did not register anything. The motor did not even make any kind of attempt to run. By the way, if you hear any kind of buzz in this recording or hum, it's because I'm near a 1940s vintage fluorescent light that I believe was owned by my grandfather. Let me move over here. But anyway, um. One. This recorder would not power up at all. I opened the unit up and tested for voltage across the main filter capacitor whenever I had the unit with batteries in and in the play position. I had jack squat. Burp. Then I decided to take my power supply, set it to 6 volts, and put it across the filter capacitor. 
and then applied power. And guess what? The motor started spinning to life. The transport was operating successfully. And then I put my meter across the battery terminals, and funnily enough, I had voltage. Then I put the batteries back in, and then it decided it would work and power up just fine. So that problem apparently had fixed itself. Now, as for the amplifier, it was absolutely, completely dead. It barely would admit any signal whatsoever when I put a signal injector onto the audio input of the head. Well, I knew exactly what was going on. Not surprisingly, and pretty much expected, it was leaky. Condensers. I opened the recorder. It was leaky condensers. 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 I opened the recorder up, made a note of the connections on the circuit board, removed those connections so that I could get easy access to the other side and use the old Heiko desoldering station, which really came in handy because I replaced every single electrolytic capacitor on the amplifier board because when I probed them with the ESR meter, aside from a few capacitors that were only slightly leaky, the grand majority of them were so thoroughly leaky that the meter on the ESR meter itself didn't even budge one single bit. I also went ahead and replaced the main filter capacitor, even though it tested fine on the ESR meter, considering it was also an old Fox Chemicon capacitor like the others from the same time. I figured it probably has had its day. I also replaced another leaky capacitor that I believe was used for filtering out motor noise. So the recorder has been completely recapped as far as electrolytics are concerned. The SSA905, when I first tried powering it up, made absolutely not one single peep from the speaker. My guess was probably leaky capacitors. I opened up the unit and found that two wires had been broken, although one of them may have been from me tugging on the top part of the case and cause a speaker wire to come loose, but another wire had already broken off previously on the speaker switch. Soldering those two wires back in place restored operation to the amplifier, although I thought to myself the capacitors will probably be at least a little bit leaky, and they were a little bit leaky when I tested them with the ESR, so I went ahead and replaced them as well. Aside from the big filter capacitor that was in there, I left that one inside. So this, so this machine has pretty much been completely recapped, and now it is operating quite well. It's quite an interesting little tape recorder with very good sound quality at 3 to 4 inches per second, but quite muffled and not that great quality at 1 and 7 eighths, which is, you know, it's not too common for portable reel to reels really to have very good quality at 1 and 7 eighths. It would have been nice if they had provided an, an equalization changing function, but they did not. The level is now set all the way up. And I am, of course, overdriving the meter as I speak. Let's see how this is with the level set all the way up. The level is set quite low. It is only going just on a little bit of the black zone of the meter. Let's see how this comes out. Now we're going to try 1 and 7 eighths. Now, unfortunately, there is a slight amount of overdriving sounding distortion on the recorder. But um, aside from that, it is, it's not too bad. But we're going to go ahead and give this machine one, some 1 and 7 eighths treatment over here. Gee whiz, it's breaking out of sweat. I cannot remember anything worth anything, and there I go, forgetting to turn the speaker switch off. So now I'm making a recording at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second on the Sony. Oh my gosh, I just feel... Uh, I've been suffering from a pretty bad cold lately, and it's just extremely unpleasant, to say the least. This morning, my neck was in extreme pain. Every time I would cough, my neck would just flare up in such intense.
intense pain. Oh, it's torture. Okay, so that is a one and seven eighths operation. If they were to have equalized it and put a bit more pre-emphasis on the treble and one and seven eighths, I bet it could have had pretty decent sound quality at that speed for voice. I mean, it didn't sound too bad. It was just a bit muff more muffled. It wasn't it didn't have the same kind of seed grinder uh, clarity, uh, flame glow, clarity that you have at three and fourths. Okay. The thing I really like about this tape here is it is 0.5 mil thickness, which is my favorite thickness for reel-to-reel -reel tape because you can fit so much of it on one reel and have so much longer recording time, which is wonderful. Well, next, which shouldn't be surprising, is the finale is we're going to show how this recorder records music because we haven't fully demonstrated the recorder's capabilities until we've not only shown it with its voice recording uh, quality, but also the way it sounds with music recording as well. Inca Dance by Cusco at 1 and 7 eighths inches per second. if you do it slightly, hold it down and it fast forwards. due to the gear drive design.
Stay tuned for a future video in which we will compare and contrast the TC905 with the TC905A.